guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be talking about what I think is one of the most heavily underappreciated writing tools, and that is, of course, I'm sure you read the title, so you already know, I don't know why I'm building it up, that is Google Docs. So I started out writing Aletheia in Word, but Red River I have been writing entirely in Google Docs, and I have been loving it. It's so much better than Word on so many levels, and I'm not even gonna talk about Scrivener. The UI of Scrivener drives me crazy, I can't use it. So I wanted to talk about Google Docs and why it is that I love it and why I think more writers should use it. So first things first, one of the best things about Google Docs is it's completely free. All you have to do is start a Google account and you're in. Next per, Google Docs is available anywhere you have a device and internet access. If you're someone who has multiple computers or you like to do writing on your phone and then sometimes on your laptop, it's always there. All you need is internet access and it's just a couple clicks and you have the exact manuscript and version that you've been working on on your other device. I use this all the time. And if you're someone who doesn't always have internet access and you need a way to write without internet access, there are ways to access the docs offline. For in browser on your laptop, there is a Google extension you can download. Just do a quick Google search and you'll find plenty of tutorials on how to do that and I think in terms of their phone app it's actually natively included and then when you have internet connection again it just resyncs up to the cloud at that time. Next perk of Google Docs is something that is so important for writers and that is it exists in the cloud. One of the worst things that can happen to you as a writer is losing your work. And with Google Docs, all of your work is saved in the cloud. And if you ever feel like you need extra backups, it's just a click away to just download it and throw a copy on your computer for extra backup. I'm paranoid, so I definitely do that every few weeks. But generally speaking, cloud storage is one of the safest forms of storage and anything you create in Google Docs is in the cloud. But that isn't the only way you're protected from lost work with Google Docs. There's also a trash bin to help with accidental deletion. If you accidentally delete a file, it's not technically gone forever because then you have the trash bin you can go into and you can restore that file. And then on top of that, you also have one of the greatest features of Google Docs, which I love so much, and that is just auto-saving. It's constantly auto-saving. If you type a letter, it's saving that single letter change. If you get blue screen, your computer completely dies when you're in the middle of typing, you might lose a couple letters and that's it. And as someone who has lost so much work because I don't save often enough, this is such a key feature for me. And the fact that you type a sentence in a Google Doc on your desktop and you open the same doc on your phone and the sentence is already there and saved and constantly the same document across any device you use. And that leads us straight into the next thing that I love about Google Docs, history and version control. Because Google Docs doesn't just save every single new letter as you're typing it. They also save the history of all of your changes. And they also give you the ability to name different versions, which allows you to directly compare different versions in the history section of the Google Doc. This is especially helpful if you're making major changes to your manuscript, like maybe you decided you wanna try out third person. You just name the version that you currently have, then you go and make the changes to make it third person, you name that version, you can directly compare the two versions and if you change your mind and you decide that you actually did like first person better, you can go into the versioning system and just restore to it. It's all still there. Now it's probably a good idea to download your file before you create a new version, just in case for some reason the system doesn't work, but I have never had any issues with it not working. And there have been a couple times that the history feature has saved me. I've gone in and made changes and then completely changed my mind. I decided I didn't want the plot to go that direction. And the changes were months old, but it didn't matter because they have the whole history section. So I just popped into the history section and just reverted back to that original version from months ago. It's so helpful, especially in a creative thing like writing, where you're not necessarily going to be able to replicate that same great sentence that you created before. But with Google Docs, that doesn't matter because the way you originally did it is still there accessible to you. The other nice thing about history is Google Docs tells you the last time your document was edited. 
And seeing that date at the top telling you when you last worked on your manuscript can really help motivate you to come back more often. The next huge perk of Google Docs is the add-ons. There's a whole add-on section that you can access where you can find all sorts of neat things that can completely change your writing process. For example, there's an add-on that completely structures your document in screenplay format. There's also add-ons for things like thesaurus and dictionary, so you can search those types of things without ever having to leave the Google Doc and without ever risking accidentally falling into Twitter. And there's just so many options for add-ons, everything from writing goals to taking notes. So if you guys would like to see a video covering some of the best add-ons for writers, let me know in a comment down below. The next perk of Google Docs, I currently have Red River structured where each chapter is its own document, but one of the really nice things if you're writing your entire book in one document is the outline feature. Google Docs has a feature that picks up on the formatting of headers. So if every time you start a chapter, you create a chapter with a specific header that says the chapter name or the chapter number, Google Docs automatically picks up on that different formatting and knows that's a type of header. So if you click on the outline dropdown, all of your chapters are gonna be right there automatically. You don't have to link anything up, it's all done for you. And then you just click on that chapter and you're instantly in that section of the document. You can also use this to your advantage for other things, like say you're working on a specific specific section in the middle of a chapter and there's an edit you want to come back to make later but you're not ready to make it yet, you can just put a specifically formatted piece of text right in the middle that says come back to edit or something along those lines and that will then show up in the outline. So then when you're looking at the outline overview, you have an easy way to instantly get to all of the places where you need to do edits. And then when you're done, you just delete that formatted piece of text and it's gone from the outline. The next thing about Google Docs, which I absolutely love, is you can share links to the document. The first benefit of this you might remember from the Trello outlining video. If you haven't seen that video yet, go watch it. I'll link it in the description down below. It's a pretty great video, I think. Another super helpful tool for writers. But anyways, if you're using an external outlining software like that, you can just go ahead and comment the links to the files you're referencing. The second benefit of this is that if you have a critique partner or later on you have beta readers or an alpha reader, it's so easy to share the document with them and you can change the level of access they have. So you can set it so that they can only view it. You can set it so that they can comment it and make suggestions on it, or you can even set it so they have full edit access and can make changes. And that leads us straight into the next thing, and that is the suggestion feature. So you can send this link to your critique partner or your alpha reader with it set for them to be able to comment. This means that if they find something they wanna bring up, they can just leave a comment on it. But also, this means that they can just make changes directly to the document. If they find a typo, they can go ahead and fix it. But it doesn't just change the document, it puts it up as a suggestion. So then you can go through it later, and you can either accept the edit or you can reject it. And the comments aren't just for critique partners or alpha readers, they're also for you. Maybe you're reading through, you're doing an edit, or you're just full on writing, and you see something that you need to check back on later. For example, when I was writing recently, I came to a point where I couldn't remember which of Jason's two eyes has the bigger blotch of brown. So rather than needing to make a separate note somewhere, I just highlight that section and leave a comment. So this is a really great way to mark things without even needing to put text into the document that could later accidentally get left in. Also worth mentioning is that Google Docs does have all of the standard features its competitor has, such as spell checking, which they actually just literally a week ago updated their spell checker to include more kind of overall grammar type corrections, like on more of a sentence level, I think. I haven't experimented with it a lot because it literally just changed. But from what I've seen, it's now catching more errors than it was two weeks ago, which is great. Another great feature is my tasks. If you look at the sidebar here, right on the edge, you have direct access to my calendars, but also Keep, where you can take notes, and My Tasks. So you can use My Tasks so you can check off your progress as you go. And this gives you just a very visual way of seeing your progress and seeing what's left. You can do that for edits you need to make or chapters you're revising. And again, you also have access to calendars. I know some writers use calendars a lot for maybe tracking the word count for that specific day. And then again, you also have keep. The nice thing too about this keep 
option is that's for note taking, but you can go ahead and just highlight any piece of text in this doc, go ahead and right click it, and just scroll down to this keep option, and that instantly takes that piece of text you had highlighted and puts it in that note. So if you wanna write a note about a specific quote or a specific piece of text, that's a very fast way to do it. And last but not least, we have some features I haven't explored, and these I think would be most useful to writers who maybe have a Patreon, especially a larger Patreon kind of following, or people who have a very open sort of process or do a lot of kind of live writing sprints with other people, that sort of thing. And that is that you can share a view only link with your readers and they can watch you in real time writing. I personally don't think I could handle that because the anxiety of knowing someone's watching me writing would make me not be able to write properly at all, but I know some writers are into that kind of thing. This also has the additional feature of these readers who are watching being able to actually chat with you. Again, that's not something I personally can do because if someone's trying to chat with me while I'm writing, I get horribly distracted, but I know a lot of writers that do that. So this incorporates that straight directly into the Google Doc itself. And one extra little perk that kind of falls into this same category is an extension called Draftback. Again, as I mentioned before, Google Docs tracks every single change you make. So the extension Draftback takes your history and replays it at a kind of sped up pace. So you get this sort of kind of speed writing little video thing that you can share with people. So this is especially good if you have Patreon. Maybe you just want to share with your patrons how your last writing session went. So again, these aren't things I've tested out myself. I'm just not the right kind of person for these specific tools. But they are tools that I think could benefit a lot of writers. And that was it for this video. Let me know in a comment down below what application or software do you currently write in? If you found this video at all helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs thumbs up and a share, and of course subscribe and hit that bell. If you're interested in new adult dystopian post-apocalyptic novels, Alethea is still available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. You can find it on Amazon, all sorts of other places, links in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video.